Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today we're going to take a look at enumerations or enum, specifically using raw values, associated values, nested enums, and how to use an enum in a switch statement. Enums essentially allow you to create your own types in Swift and are especially helpful in keeping your code neat and free of potential typos, especially when working with string values. Let's start by setting a crypto enum. Enum crypto case, we'll set three different cases, BTC, case LTC, and case G is going. Now each case name basically acts as its own value. So if you print out one of these cases, crypto.btc, you'll get BTC all lowercase. But in some cases, it might be more helpful to add your own raw value to each individual case. So let's build out another crypto enum and have it declare string enum crypto string, and we'll say string here, case BTC, case LTC, and case G's going. Now in each of these cases, we can add our own raw value by putting an equal sign and then a string afterwards, Bitcoin, Litecoin, G's going. Now let's print out our crypto string dot cheese coin. And if we print this out, we'll actually initially just get cheese coin. And that's because we need to add dot raw value to get the raw value of this actual string in here. So now if we press play again, we'll get cheese coin instead. We can also pass parameters to an enum. Let's look at that. We'll make another enum called enum crypto param, we'll put one case here, BTC, and here if we put in our parentheses, we can add a variable name, let's just say amount, and we'll set it of type double. And now let's create a print statement where we pass a parameter to our case, print crypto param dot BTC and we can put in any amount here. Let's just say 0 0.003 and press play. BTC amount is equal to 0 0.003. One use case for enum might be creating bash command strings that can be used in a function that runs a bash process separately. To show you what I mean, let's say enum bash command and we'll set it to type string and we'll just put in two cases for now case ls. If you want to run an ls command to get the contents of the current directory, you can say triple quote here. Let's close our three quotes before we forget. And we'll just say ls minus la users shared. And we can put another case for make dir. Three quotes. Make dir users shared test dir quotes. Now initially when creating a function that will run bash commands you might be tempted to use a string parameter so that might look something like func run bash command and you might just put in here command is of type string and just we won't actually run any command we'll just do a print statement. Now we potentially call this by running run bash command and then put a string in here ls minus la users shared and this will work but two problems might arise one what happens if you have multiple commands sure you could separate them with a semicolon and put other things here like print working directory echo test something like that but the other issue you might run into is there could be any number of typos in this string and it might be very hard down the line to debug this so we can refactor our run bash command function to take an enum instead, in which case it'll be more resilient to typos. Let's build a new function, run bash with enum. We'll put in command, and this will be a type bash command. And again, we'll just print out our command, but this time we have to print out command dot raw value to access the string that is in each of our cases. So let's run it, run bash command with enum, and now we can call our dot ls. 
In this case, enum has made it very easy for us to write out this function line, and this can never be .lss or .lst or .lsu, something like that. It can only ever be ls or mkdir. Can it only ever be those two cases, or however many cases you have in your bash command enum. Now let's look at how to work with nested enums, which can actually get rather complicated. Let's make a salad enum. And in this example, our salad is going to have a vegetable and a dressing. So let's make two more enums. Enum vegetable, enum dressing. Each of our vegetables can also have a cut style. They can be diced or chopped. So let's write enum cut, and we'll have a case for diced and a case for chopped. Now in our vegetable enum, we have two different vegetables that we're going to work with. Case tomato and case cucumber. In our dressing enum, let's work with two different dressings. Case Italian and case oil and vinegar. Now that we've built out our sub enums, we can add our two cases for vegetable and dressing in our salad enum. Case vegetable. Here we put parentheses, vegetable and vegetable dot cut. So we're passing two parameters to our vegetable case. The first parameter is our vegetable itself, so that can be a tomato or a cucumber. And the second is our vegetable dot cut enum, which has either the diced or the chopped cases available. For dressing, we can say case, dressing, and pass in one parameter, and that's just going to be dressing. Now let's create an empty salad array and a function that helps us build a salad. Var salad, array of type salad equals empty. Now let's create our build salad function, which will help us build a salad based on our enums. Funk build salad, call with ingredient, type salad, which is our enum above. At first you might be tempted to try to access each individual ingredient by saying ingredient dot, but you'll notice only self is available. In order to access all the nested cases, we're going to have to use a switch statement. Switch ingredient. Let's start by adding a case for chopped cucumbers. Case. And we see right away we have a vegetable or dressing available. That matches with these two cases above here. Case, vegetable. And our parameters will be cucumber and chopped. print add chopped cucumber. As you can see, using nested enums made this case declaration very simple and easy to read and resilient to errors and typos. However, since our nested enum contains several different cases, our switch statement can get very long and convoluted by the end. So you just have to keep that in mind when working with nested enums. Let's make another case for vegetable cucumber dot diced print add diced cucumber at this point all of our cucumbers are accounted for in our switch statement we have a case for chopped cucumbers and a case for diced cucumbers now let's add one for tomato but let's make it so that we don't actually care about the cut style of tomato we can do that using an underscore case vegetable dot tomato and we'll just put an underscore here. Print, add, tomatoes, cut any style. What's happening here with the underscore is that this particular case matches a tomato that's chopped and diced. The underscore is basically saying, I don't care if it's chopped or diced or whatever value it might be. I just want to match all cases where we have tomato. And you may have noticed that Swift is saying switch must be exhaustive and this can actually help. We can press fix and we'll add the rest of our cases for us. We've already covered all of our vegetables, so we can remove this one and we can just add one for dressing. Print 
just add some dressing. After our switch statement, let's be sure to append our new ingredient to our salad array. Salad.append ingredient. Now let's put our build salad function to work and make a salad. Build salad with dot vegetable and we'll call it cucumber diced and let's also add a tomato a vegetable tomato chopped and let's add a dressing oil and vinegar Although our switch statement was rather complicated, you can see that our function calls are very straightforward and resilient to typos and other mistakes. So now let's print out each item of our salad and see what we have. For ingredient in salad, give ourselves some more room here, print ingredient. Now you'll see in each of our ingredients, there's this weird looking string expression, and that's basically because we didn't add a description property to our enum cases. So Xcode is doing the best it can here to print out what we have inside of each of our cases. However, you'll see that we have a salad.vegetable.cucumber, and the vegetable is cut diced. And we have a tomato that's chopped, and we have an oil and vinegar dressing. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Please hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and remember to hit the dinner bell.